What up guys? Hope you're all having a good day. We got some things going down this weekend. If you don't know, we're going drifting. Like you've seen in the last video, we installed the angle kit. Oh no, actually we didn't install the angle kit. I'm getting a little excited here. We need to install. We need to install the angle kit. We installed the hydro and the uh, rear calipers on the Jenny. So Robbie's a little excited. He's gonna be doing some extra, extra gangster slides this weekend at Shannonville. But it's not the only car we gotta get ready. I gotta go get the G and last year I was having some heat soaking problems. So we're gonna do a test run with this guy. Robbie's inside editing because he's trying to get stuff done. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go rob his truck and we're gonna tug this thing back to my place, scoop the G. So let's go. Oh, that is my dream. Oops, kinda hard to see <laughs> through the camera, I'm not used to it. <laughs> but we good. Damn, Bazzi. We made it to my place, we got the Drift G here. Uh, it's been sitting basically since the last time we went drifting. I've had the battery on the trickle charger. It's the first start after, man, I almost wanna see like, oh, Wiley's been in here, wipers just came on. Gotta love a good BQ. Heated seats are on. Sometimes a little guy just likes to come play around in here. Damn. Not gonna lie, that was probably one of the sketchiest things I've ever done. I'm just not like super familiar with loading cars, especially by myself. I was a little nervous, but we got her. This is the ramp stitch. Had to just load this thing up, but she up and we good. So buddy, I made it. Dude, I need some of these straps. Look at these. Mine you got like the, the big thick ass roll at the end because they're like 25 feet. Yeah, buddy. No, 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 no. Please tell me you did not use litter. Did you go split that just for this? No, I was already split. Yeah, okay. Dude, what are you talking about? No. Hey. No. I no. had limited wood no. and limited people here. Okay, okay, well now you got unlimited wood and two people. No way is this boy using a freaking log. I'm I'm burning that later. If anything goes wrong here, it's because he took my logs from me. <laughs> Shut up and get the car off the trailer. All right. <laughs> In case Chris wasn't super direct with you, the, the main issue is this car and all of its 421,000 kilometers. Uh, it doesn't like to stay cool, boys. It doesn't actually overheat. The problem is it gets way too hot and it gets like heat no. soaked. Yeah. Exactly. And it just doesn't, it just doesn't it run just right. It just cooks itself. Plus it has a, like 400, what does it have on it? 421. 421. That's what so, I was just saying. The old girl, she needs some, some fresh air. <laughs> so do you. <laughs> Last year when we went drifting, I think probably our second day. Yeah. I have a video of this just losing all power. Yeah. Just being like, nah, I can't breathe, too hot. Yeah, I had no nut. So I think first thing we gotta do with this guy is just figure out how to keep it as cool as possible for zero dollars. <laughs> hundred percent. I'm thinking we start with just, we get this thing on a switch or something okay. so that we can just have the fan going all day. And then, I don't know. We have probably some piping that we could add to this to stick it down somewhere else. Oh, we could do that, yeah. That might help actually. Tim, we're gonna do some things to this car. I hope that you don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> So that piece of plastic's only job was to keep heat from rising out of here and keep it soaking down underneath the shield. Cone is in a good spot right here, but like look, there's just like random blockages right in the way. Not like that. Not whatever this thing is. Oh, that's out of the way. So now when this bumper's on, I mean, it's still breathing from like a sort of congested area, I would yeah, say, but, but at least it's gonna be getting, oh, see, actually we could do that. Oh. Look at that. The idea is we're gonna drill some holes in this and we're gonna get too cold air instead of it roasting right here. Also for everybody that's always bitching at us for not having the proper wiring tools, we got them. You ready? Yeah, you get it in there and then I'll touch power. Here you go. Blowing towards the engine. 
Okay, so you're good. All right, so green is ground. Nope. Green is power. Nope. What is it? Green is ground. Green is ground. Black, Black is, is power. All right, knobs back in. Final test, you got everything wired up out there, right? Yeah. They sound so just like tired. Yeah, probably. It's okay. it's okay, they work. Super cheap, super easy way to keep the car cool because I have the thing in the Genesis where like it shows you your temperature and you can adjust what temperature the fan comes on at, which is handy, it's cool for me. I like to keep my eye on like temperatures and stuff like that. But for this car, it just gets heat soaked. So the thing is, if you can have the fans running always, even when you're like not, you know, not driving the car, it's just sitting in the pits or like you're in line to go out and the car is not on and you just keep the fan on all the time. If you can start your run as cold as possible, you will get as much life out of the car as possible. Bruh, what are you doing? Me and Tim wanted hood vents, so I think we're gonna make so some. So we're making hood vents? I think so. Hey, what do you think? Do we want to like have it wider at the bottom and go like narrow? Do you want to have it wide at the top come narrow? Do you want them to be all the same? What if we did this line like straight? You know what I mean? This one goes straight with this little bubble in your hood here. This line comes up straight and this one comes in on an angle so that they get smaller towards the bottom, but they do it with the shape of the hood also. Yeah, yeah, we could try and do that. But then we're gonna have to take like whatever out from underneath so it actually is like... Yeah, functional. Yeah. We're gonna make them as functional as we can and then maybe one day we'll actually buy you like a nice vented hood. Now while Chris is working on that, I'm gonna go ahead and hopefully, as long as this works, we're gonna complete the Genesis manual swap, finally. It has been over a year since we manual swapped this thing and honestly, like everything's gone really well, but I still get some of you guys commenting on the video sometimes asking when we're gonna like officially complete the swap. Cause you guys know, I was trying to show you how to save some money when you do this. So literally, you can swap any transmission and just leave the ECU auto. You'll just get this absolute catastrophe of engine lights that, that I have right now. Oh, it's actually not bad today. Engine light and a traction control light and a gas light, that has nothing to do with the ECU. Now basically, if you leave the automatic ECU in the car, the car just has to think it's in park. So somewhere in this mess of wires, there was a wire that came down and there was like a park switch. So when you put the car in park, it would press the button and I literally just taped, oh, right there. I just taped the crap out of the button. That's the button right there. I taped it all together so that it won't come apart. So the car always thinks it's in park, so it'll always start. You'll always be able to get the key out. Lots of times people have like key restrictions. It's all good, it works fine. You guys have seen me thrashing on it last year at the track and like just having fun with it. We can go ahead and open this can of worms and see if it's even worth it. So now we got this auto plug just <laughs> doing absolutely nothing. That's where I feel like we're still gonna have a bunch of problems maybe. All right, I'm saying we just go for it. We see if it throws any codes. First things first boys, we gotta start this thing up. I wonder if we're gonna have an issue with having, let's just, all right. Before I say anything, let's just see what happens. That's what I thought was gonna happen. I just had that realization when I got in the car. It's not even a start, dude, because the clutch has no plug. I think I just didn't think this one through enough. I feel like we've had a lot going on recently and I was just like, thought swapping the ECU in would work. But literally before I even started the car, I knew that I made a mistake. So I don't even think it's worth doing, to be honest, because like we don't really want to build this engine because they're notoriously not that strong. Spending a lot of time and money in here may not be our best option. I'm just trying to ride this thing out, see how long it'll last me, because so far it's doing really good, actually. And basically the problem is we'd have to get a manual harness and it'd be able to do this because this is looking for a couple wires in the harness that's giving it the signal that the clutch is depressed and those wires do not exist because we don't have a manual harness. So along with ECU, we would have to go ahead and grab the right harness, which just ain't gonna happen. So out comes this boy. This man has finally finished his five millionth try on taping this hood. So we can actually maybe, can we do, can we? Okay, let's, let's cut it. This kid's paranoid. He literally measured this 50 million times, probably the same as it's been like five other tries. <laughs> no, you're just like, okay, it's good enough. Okay. Stop stressing, we're cutting the damn hood. I didn't realize it was aluminum. Thank God it's an aluminum hood. Yeah. This is gonna be so much nicer. Tonight. 
I'd say from what I can see, it actually looks pretty good. The paint is gonna be getting to like the next layer and actually like cutting through the secondary layer. But I think once you fold them, nice. Once you fold them down, you'll be able to see better. Yeah, so we're gonna have to rip this off. But you can see right here like where you came through, where you came through, and I'm sure the next one's underneath this carpet. So we'll just use that as our guide. Always remember to wear masks, guys. <laughs> Oh, that's perfect though, dude. Look at that. Damn. Damn. So this line here is that. So you can just bring the back of this line to there. That's super, super minty. This could be so easy for you. Dude, that actually worked really well. Basically what you're doing is you're just cutting the second layer of the hood out. So it's a little bit flimsier, yes. Without that, you can't do anything, right? So it still feels pretty structural for the fact that we cut it in half. I think it's just because we got the frame rail still. Yeah, you this didn't do like anything too support, bad. So we, we just missed it. Okay, so do you want to put this down and try and do a couple bends and see what happens? Do you have any better ideas? Than using a paint stick to bend metal? Yeah. Nope. <laughs> yeah, let's try this one. I'll need you to bend though. I really don't know how we're going to do this with the camera. Camera's probably going to have to go down, but I'm just interested in showing everybody your setup here. I'm sure you guys can find a better technique if you can do this yourself. We're just working with what we have, and honestly, it worked out really nice. So the first one, a um, little bit of paint crack. We didn't heat it. I don't know why we didn't heat it. Just didn't. We, we just weren't thinking about it. But after that, we started heating them, and there was absolutely no issues, and none of the paint cracked or anything like that, which is actually a nice. And you guys can see we got like a nice smooth bar across each of them. You wanna see how it looks? Yeah, I wanna see how it looks. Give her close, side. give her close. Oh, damn. Yo, it not, looks not That's bad. That's not bad. Not bad. You could probably spend some time getting those bends nice and flat. Like, this is all dependent yeah. on how much time you wanna put into it. But you could spend some time like, Warping these so that yeah, they're all sure. perfectly oh, flat. Cardboard too. Oh, it is. It's, it's getting all jammed up. Dude, this is gonna keep your car so cool. And also, it's so cool. I don't even understand how this came out this well. Dude, I'm, I'm stoked, man. I think, okay, I was real nervous at first. Really? No. Is that why it took you five hours to get the yeah. measurements right? Well, yeah. I, I like triple, double, quadruple checked because I wasn't feeling like Tim wanted me to do this. So I was a little nervous, but I did it anyway. And I think Tim is gonna be super stoked because I'm, I'm fired up right now. Dude, there's no way. Like, Tim, there's no way you can look at this and not just love this man like if this wasn't a drift car and we put like the, the extra oh, into yeah, it if we put the extra the extra time into it wow man damn it looked good when you get up close you can see into the engine which is actually like really nice it's right there and the whole idea of this is to let obviously hot air rise up out of the engine whatever i'm sure there's some sort of drag that'll yeah. happen that pulls it out but flick that sweat fan yeah, on I for me yeah i mean the fan's got 400 something thousand on it it's still the original fan it's a little weaker than I would like. Oh, that's mint. You don't feel like a wind, but you feel air coming yeah, out. Yeah, that's nice. Now not only is your fan gonna be running always, like I've just pictured like this is in the pit right now. We're just chilling, we're eating a sandwich, and you're bringing your car down to like 60 degrees before we go yeah. back out. Whereas mine, when I turn it off, it doesn't cool down that fast. Yeah. So you're gonna have this running and this, the hot air is coming out. So not only are we cycling more, but we're actually getting rid of it now. Yeah. It's not just blowing oh, around, yeah. it's actually leaving. Can we go up the road and just get a couple drive-bys just for me to look at? Yeah, for sure. You can't even see them. Oh yeah. Dude, it's weird, like, when you came up sort of slow, and I think it's a perfect drift mod. Nice. Cause like, if you if we were cruising on the highway together, we I would notice, Yeah. but if you drove by me, I wouldn't even notice. Beautiful. Well, we're ready. We are ready for another weekend of the G and Jenny drifting. Jenny's such a birth, man. She's like the size of the G. No kidding. <laughs> Anyways, that's basically it for today's video. We're gonna take these things, we're gonna do like a bolt check on everything, make sure all the fluids are good, obviously put some fresh oil, Yeah, that's for whatever sure. your car needs. Yeah. <laughs> but we're gonna freshen everything up, make sure everything's good, do a full bolt check, get everything on the trailers and ready to go, stuff that you guys don't really care to see. So that's it, that's all I got for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out. If you made it this far, they got a comment, skid pad. If you guys made it this far, 
comment, skid pad. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out and stay committed. Right, Tim? <laughs> I'm just gonna keep saying Tim because he's probably gonna watch this video and just like have such a hoot because it's like his car. And he doesn't have to do any of the work. <laughs> yeah, and he's just gonna be like, nice. Oh, you're molesting it. <laughs>